I wonder what's keeping Whedon. Watchman's dead. You killed him. You hear? You murdered him. I stole money from the bank. I gambled and lost it. They could send me to jail for that. That's all. But now, now they can send me to the chair. But I won't go alone. I won't go alone. All cars, Oliver Whedon, Oliver Whedon, cashier, Hancock Bank, absconding with $100,000. Late last night, visited bank vault, killed the bank watchman. Description of Oliver Whedon, 5 feet 4 inches, weight 160, brown hair, mustache, natty dresser. Watch all ferries, railroad terminals. Pick up taxi cab, license number 046720. Taxi was seen parked late last night outside Hancock Bank. License number 046720, that's all. Let's go. you, Dale? Are you still working with this newspaper? Sure I am, sweetheart. How could I ever leave you? <laughs> okay. Then get over to Hancock Bank. Yeah, cashier flew the coop. Watchman murdered. Get the story. Say, did I ever fail you? Certainly not. But you get the story, and I don't care how you do it. But get it. I'll get the story. I don't know how, but I'll get it. Sure. So long, sunshine. I hope you find sand in your spinach. Hey, Woody, come here a minute, will you? What do you want? Say, let me take five bucks, will you? <laughs> Thanks for the compliment. Say, what's the matter? Are you broke again? <laughs> Woody, I'm so broke, I couldn't even ride home for money. <laughs> well, I'll see you later. Where are you going? Over to a bank to get a story. Well, there's nothing of any importance here. Hang a newspaper legman outside waiting to see you, Captain. Tell him to get all their information at headquarters. And Clymer, I want you to keep all reporters out of here. Leave it to me. Come on, Owen. Here, wait a minute, wait a minute. You can't come in the bank now. What do you mean I can't come in the bank where my money is? Do you want me to report you to the bank examiners? Sorry, police orders. There's an investigation going on. You don't mean to tell me that the bank is closed? Oh, my money. No, no, your money's safe enough. There's been a murder. A murder? Mm. Well, how is he now? Uh, why, he's dead. Dead? Oh, isn't that too bad? That's too bad. I... <laughs> here, 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 wait a minute. Oh, see if the manager has a list of those stolen bills. Right, Steve. Oh, Cap, you remember me, Dale, on the Daily Journal. Hmm. You're good, Clymer. 
Yes, sir. Just leave it to you to keep the reporters out, eh? Yes, sir. You know Dale, don't you? Why, sure, of course. Uh, Hello there, Inspector. Uh, well, why was it that you forgot that he was a reporter? Why, you see, I... Say, how did you get in here? You're a detective. You find out. Say, Cap, about this case. It's just another one of those things, isn't it? Nothing big or mysterious about it, is there? Chief, here's the list of the stolen money. Yeah, yeah. Hunter. You can get all the details, Dale, at headquarters. Do you mind? No, certainly not. I won't say a word about it, Cap. I... Uh-oh. <clears throat> I'll uh, see you at headquarters. Hello there, sweet stuff. Say, do you work here? No, I'm a depositor, figuring my balance. Lucky girl. You know, I can figure mine out on the back of a collar button. <laughs> Say, listen, kid, you can do something for me. I can? Sure. But you're thinking, will you? Listen, I want you to do something for me, will you? It'll save a guy's good name, his career, his future, everything. Who is he? Me. Come on, give me the lowdown on this case, will you? I've got to get it. If I don't, the boss is going to fire me, and all that I've worked for will be finished, ruined. Oh, come on, don't be an icicle. Let me in on it, will you? Say, did this uh, Wheaton have a sweetheart? Have you ever been out with him? Um, how much did he get away with? Guess I'm wrong. I shouldn't ask a nice, loyal girl like you to tell tales out of school. Just forget I said anything about it. Why, I wouldn't have you betray your confidence for anything in the world. No, sir, not me. I'll tell the boss I'm quitting. Hello. Let me have a private line. Outside. This is a police department call. Thanks. You know, lady, you've taught me a lesson. Yes, sir. I'm going to quit snooping around. I'm going to settle down. Settle down, get shine, and raise chicken. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Come on, sweetheart. Let me have a little sunshine. Yeah, a little sunshine. You know, that gloomy guy on the city desk. Well, it's about time you called up. Where have you been? What's that? The first edition. All right, set it down there. All right. What have you got? Now get there, sunshine. You're the only one that's got the serial numbers of those five $1,000 bills. Yes, they're the only clue in the case. You ready? Well, here they are. I... Well, some of them have gone, but here's some others. Hold on just a minute, will you? Here you are. 35C. Four seven eight nine three, and the others follow in uh, numerical uh, progression. If you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, four, five, six, seven, yeah, and I didn't go to Harvard. Go ahead. What else? And listen, sweetheart. There's another very important figure in the case. I haven't got the name yet, but I will. Sure. Goodbye. I suppose you have everything you want now. No, everything uh, but your name. You figure it out. Oh, Miss Hackett. I have. Hackett. Miss Hackett. My mistake, my error. Yes, Mr. Tennant? Have you that list completed? In a moment. A little chilly around here, Miss Hackett. Well, I'll see you again sometime. I don't think so. Hello? Just one moment, please. Telephone call for you, Captain. Thank you. Hello? Morgan speaking. Oh, yes, Lieutenant. They did? Where? Good. All right, tell Jensen to wait for me. I'll be right over. They think they found Whedon. Where? In a warehouse on the east side. 
murdered. I think I'll need you, Mr. Tennant, to identify the body. Why, of course, yes. Captain. Anything I can do to help you. I thank you. It seems there was a taxi stopped in front of the building. Apparently deserted. Well, uh, Captain, uh, do you mind if I go along? Say, now listen, you stay out of this until we need you. All right, all right, Captain. But I've got to be on the square with the boys of my profession mm -hmm. and let them know all about it. Oh, say, now listen, you can go along. All right. You can go along. And just for that, Cap, I'm going to help you solve this crime. And says you. Says me. Oh, cut out the argument. Come on with me. Well, Hot Chop, I'll be seeing you. Not if I can help it. But you can. <laughs> Follow that police car. Official business. Oh, hello, Tits. Yeah? Gee, I haven't slept for new tights. What? Uh, two nights. What's up? Cashier flew the coop with a hundred grand. And now they find him murdered with a deserted taxi cab waiting for him. Yeah? Yeah. Say, that's a great story. Phone it in for me, will you? Sure. Thanks. Hey, taxi, hurry up, will you? Keep behind that other car. dollar bill. <laughs> Take a look at that, Tennant. That's one of them. I thought so. <laughs> uh, just a minute. That goes in as evidence now, Tennant. <laughs> well, you'll get it back. But I think if, the, if that is just as safe with us as it would be in your bank. <laughs> hey, Cap, what happened to the rest of that dough? Oh, well, oh. That money, 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 money. Who's got the money? You know, boys, I think this is going to be a very fascinating game. And, Cap, I got a hunch that we're all going to be on a merry-go-round before we find the rest of those $1,000 bills. And here's another thing. What do you think happened to, to the driver of that seagoing hack outside? <laughs> you should be a detective, Dale. <laughs> so should you. I'll send the wagon out. Come on, Strickland. Well, uh, what that, uh, what? Uh, what happened? Man got tired and laid down a little while. Hello, climber. Hello. I've got a job for you. Leave it to me, Captain. Say, listen. If that man climber ever says, leave it to me again, <laughs> by the... Well, I'll put him back pounding famous. That's what I'm going to do with him. Chief, something on that taxi chauffeur from the Vice Squad files. Oh. An informer, eh? How long has he been working for us? About five years. Good man. Yeah? Just getting ready to give us the dope on the biggest gambling organization here in the East. Roberts is the man we want. Bring him in. Leave it to me. <laughs> in the embalming business today, eh? It's awful quiet, son. Awful quiet, eh? Well, it's a depression, Pop. It's the depression. Say, why not get in a couple of fancy caskets? Give them a big window display. That always draws business. <laughs> Change. Here comes Dale. 
hail now. Oh, up high, son. Right. Well, gentlemen of the press. Well, what makes you so happy? Ha <laughs> ha, there's excitement in the air. Yeah? Yes, sir. Robbery, murder, mystery, millions missing, dead cashier, deserted taxi cab. Oh, boy, are we going to have fun. Oh, boy, am I dead. I haven't slept for three nights. Oh, what a life. I want to buy a casket. Why, of course, sir, of course. Uh, uh, will you step in? You can look through the catalogue and make a selection. Hey, Ryan, look. Pop's got a customer. Here's something very nice, sir. All cushion, brass handles, unless you want something better. No, no, that'll do. Now, I want you to send that to the 13 Club. Right away, you understand? It's at 54th and Madison. Send it to Jack Bradshaw. The name, Bradshaw. I'll give you a deposit and you can get the balance, COD. George, what have you done? Keep out of this, Ruth. I'll handle my own affairs. You must tell me. I told you to keep out of it. Look, Ryan. She came to visit me. <laughs> I wonder what there is about me. Me! Can I help you, Miss Haggard? I don't understand. What? About my being here? Well, that's not quite as mysterious as you being here. Tell me, please. Why did he come here? Who, the young man? Well, wait a minute. I'll get all the details for you. I'll give it back to you in a minute, Pop. Now, let's see. Now, this must be it. It's the first order he's had in six months. Casket, gray trim, brass handles. Price $150, sent to the 13th Club. Mr. Jack Bradshaw. Say, is that big boy Bradshaw? It is. How could he know there's anyone dead at that place? No one dead? Well, then why the casket? Hello? Get me Dale, please. Oh, fight You don't live right, your mother. No. Hey, lay off of that big casino. No wonder I can't win. Go ahead, I'm ready. Well, if you are, it's the first time. I never can get you on the wire. Now get this. There's a bulletin in from City News. Something looks like murder. At the 13th Club, 54th Street. Yes, you probably know where it is. The 13th Club? Yeah, I expected that. I said I expected that. Never mind why, that'll be in the story. Sure, I'm on my way already. Come on, Ryan, wake up. Huh? What? There's something screwy going on. Oh, what's happened? Oh, boy, we're on a merry-go-round. Oh, what's there to be so happy about? Leave those cards alone, I'll see you later. Come on, Ambition. Well, hello, boys. Who's murdered? Who did it and why? Go on in and have a look. Okay, Sergeant. Hey, Tut. What? What's on your mind? Hey, listen, if it gets... If it gets interesting, will you maul me? Uh, call me? Certainly. Sit right down there and make yourself at home. Okay. Dicky Roberts was the guy's name. He's a man. Go on and have a look. And when you come out, you can tell us who did it and why. <laughs> I'd be glad to help you, Inspector. See you later. Guys work fast. 
Fellow's been dead 30 minutes and here you are with the box. Send the bill to the city. They'll have to buy one anyway. Boys, I've got it. Uh, he was a gangster, six foot tall and left-handed. What? You are in Sherlock Holmes? What's crime coming to? <laughs> well, I'll bite. How do you know he was a gangster, six feet tall and left-handed? Come on inside and I'll let you in on it. Now, uh, Inspector, will you stand right here, please? There you are. Let me have your gun, will you, Sergeant? With pleasure. Hey, what's the idea? <laughs> You'll find out. Now, now, you're a robber. He was standing right there, just where you are. Now, I made an examination of the wound, and I found that the bullet uh, entered on the left-hand side, right behind the heart, right in here. Then it came out on the right-hand side. Now, Sergeant, will you uh, kindly step right down here? Stand back of me. If you'll stand behind me, you'll find that if I were to fire this gun with the left hand, that would be the exact course of that bullet. Uh-huh. Hey, go on, wise guy, go on. Don't shoot. <laughs> Point number two. Dinky Roberts was shot with a flat-nosed bullet. Mm. Only gangsters use them. Mm -hmm. And if that isn't enough, they give it to you in the back. Then point number three. The bullet came out a, a little bit lower uh, than it entered on the other side. <laughs> you see, doing a simple bit of geometry, which I learned at college, you wouldn't know anything about that, I find that the man must have been at least well, at least six inches taller than the man he shot, which would make the murderer about, well, about six foot tall. What was the guy's name? Ah, oh, shut up, Climber. <laughs> Give me that who, gun. Who, who fired that gun? Who? What happened? Oh, go and sit down. I'll phone it in. <laughs> That's all right, Inspector. It's my mistake. It was just an accident. But here's another thing. The uh, murderer didn't leave his cart, so... Uh, if you find out who it is, ask him his name, will you? Here's something that he did leave. What? Another one of those thousand dollar bills. Yeah. Well, this proves to me that he wasn't any gangster. Good. Come in. Come in. Well, what do you want here? I came to see Mr. Bradshaw. Come on down here. You came to see Bradshaw, eh? Who are you? What difference does it make? A lot of difference. And you keep your mouth shut, Scribbler. Well, come on, come on. Who are you? I'm Ruth Hackett. Any relation to Georgie Hackett? He's my brother. Now, we're getting somewhere, Sergeant. Well, I'm glad you dropped in, lady. We want to know something about Georgie Agate and this uh, big boy Bradshaw. I don't know a thing. Maybe you'd like to go down with us and tell it to the captain. Oh, wait a minute. You can't do that. 
Maybe we can't, but we're going to. Climber. Yeah? You stick around here in case anybody else shows up. What'll I do with them? Oh, fry them a couple of eggs. What'll you do with them? Yeah. You'll take them down to headquarters. That's what you'll do with them. Come on. Pull yourself together, kid. We'll come through. Well, let's get going. Okay. Miss Hackett, we'd very know where your brother is. I don't know. Where's Bradshaw? I don't know. I was just passing by and thought I'd drop in. Oh, it was only for a visit. It's rather strange, isn't it, considering Bradshaw and your brother are deadly enemies? Who says they are, Sergeant? I say so. There's been bad blood between them since Bradshaw kicked Hackett out of his club. Oh, please, Dale. Remember, you're here is a sort of a matter of courtesy. Don't forget that, please. Okay, Captain. Hello? Yes? All right, send him right in. It's Tennant. If this is about Miss Hackett, I'm sure you've made some mistake. We all make mistakes, Mr. Tennant, now and then. But that's not what I want to see you about. Won't you be seated? Thank you. Could you identify this? Well, yes. That's one of the missing bills. <laughs> I thought so. And uh, did you ever see this man before? Why, of course. That's the taxi driver outside the bank. You mean he was? This man was murdered. And this banknote was found on the body. He undoubtedly had something to do with the death of Whedon. You see, Captain, you're making it difficult. First we have a mystery, and then you make a puzzle out of it. <laughs> I suppose you think the little lady's guilty. We'll find out who's guilty. Well, your guess is as good as mine. Here we are with two charming murders, and not even a suspicious character arrested. <laughs> and now you want to pick on the little lady. Please, Mr. Dale, I don't want you to get in any trouble. Don't worry about me, Miss Hackett. We're all pals. Am I right, Sarge? You're always right. Thanks for the compliment. Hey, where are you going? I'm going in there. You can't go in there. Oh, can't I try and stop it? Say, listen. Say, you haven't any right to bring her down here. Just who are you? I'm George Hackett. Oh, uh, just a minute, Owen. It's all right, officer. We wanted to see you, Hackett. Well, here I am. Now let her out of here. I'm going to stay here now. Sis. Young Dinky Roberts was killed this afternoon at the 13 Club. Well, what do I care? What do you know about it? What should I know about it? Maybe you'd rather tell Sergeant Owens in private, Listen, huh? Listen, you're not going to get anything out of me. It's all right, Owen. You come along with me, Georgie. Listen, you're wasting your time. Georgie, time is what I've got a lot of. Okay, so have I. What are they going to do with you? Not a thing, sis. Listen, you've got to let her out of here. Come along, Georgie. All right, Bert. In here. There you are, Georgie. Take the throne. Boys, this is Georgie Hackett. Hello, Georgie. Oh, oh, hello. 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 Oh, cut out the soft soap. What do you want of me? Go ahead if you think it's going to do you any good. We're not going to hurt you, Georgie. All we want to know is who killed Whedon and then Dinky Roberts. Well, I suppose I may go now, Captain. In just a few minutes, Mr. Tennant. Something may turn up inside. Well, of course, we will insist. Come on now, Georgie. You did send it. We know you were at the undertaker's shop. You know you meant to kill him. Oh, shut up. Now listen, I'm going to tell you this just once. 
Yes, I sent the coffin to Bradshaw. And I sent him a note. But I was out to get Bradshaw. So it was a mistake when you killed Dicky Roberts, eh? What did you want to do with that? Come on, okay. come clean. Wait, wait a minute, boys. Don't get sore at him. Give him a chance to explain. Come on now, Georgie. We don't want to hurt you. I was out to get Bradshaw. I didn't even know the Roberts was dead. Say, you haven't got anything on me at all now. But you will have when I meet that big shot. Now, what do you want to act like that for, Georgie? I'll tell you why. I work for him. You know I pulled plenty of money into that crooked game of his. You know all about that. Why don't you stop it? He keeps getting away with it. Now, if you'll help us, Georgie... Listen, I'm not going to help anybody. This is strictly a personal affair. You knew I worked for him, but you didn't know why he kicked me out. Well, I'll tell you. Because he didn't want me around while he was trying to make a play for my sister. The only way I can stop him is to kill him. Now, don't be like that, kid. But you haven't told us yet who killed Whedon. I don't was know it any... Bradshaw or was it Robert? I don't know anything about Whedon. But you did know him, didn't you? Sure I knew him. That's not a proof that I murdered him. I think there's something I'd better explain. Now, wait a minute. You know, you don't have to say anything. I think it's best if I do. I think so too, Miss Hackett. You see, it's really my fault. When I first met Mr. Bradshaw, I thought he was a fine, decent man and behaved as any other girl would act. Then when I discovered the truth... You mean that he was just a gambler? Yes. Then he wouldn't let me break off. That's why my brother quarreled with him. I see. I'm sure that's true, Captain. I know, for instance, that Whedon was taken into Bradshaw's games by young Hackett. Bradshaw came into the bank quite frequently to uh, call on Miss Ruth and seemed unusually friendly with Whedon. Toward the end, we suspected our cashier had been gambling and losing heavily. But before I had time to prove it, the tragedy happened. Thanks, Tennant. I myself believe that the little lady's story is okay. Whoop, back it. You go with Burke. We found this note on young Hackett, Chief. Thanks, Sergeant. I want to read a note that comes from a man who is dead. Dear George, I am leaving tonight and I'll probably... I want to warn you for the last time. Look out for Bradshaw. You know my feelings for Ruth. I don't want anything to happen to her and I won't be here to prevent it. So you must. Signed, Oliver Wheat me now. I think not, Miss Haggerton. He'd better stay with us for a while. We'll keep him out of trouble. See you later, Captain. What, uh, would you like to go to a movie, Miss Hackett? No, thank you, Mr. Dale. Well, Something else you'd like to do, Miss Hackett? No, truly, Mr. Dale. Thank you. Say, pardon me, Mr. and Ms. Astor. You know, you don't have to be so formal on my account. Hey, quit punching me, or uh, stop punching me, will you? Or I'll tell her what you said. What? I'll tell her you said she was the grandest little girl in the world. Oh, uh, <laughs> who said that? I'm sure he was only kidding you. Yeah, no. Uh, I didn't, uh, well, I did say something like that. <laughs> Where are we? Well, we've driven through Central Park four times, up Broadway and down Fifth. Now we're starting all over again. Oh, my, you don't get a little sleep. You know, I haven't closed an eye for... Oh, for five nights. Okay, go ahead and go to sleep. Say, listen, what is this? Jeez, I like to go someplace when I'm going someplace. 
See, on this ride, all we need is a calliope and a couple of rings to grab as we go by. Say, what is this? Where are we going? We might go up to my place. Hmm? I might even find some food. Food? Yeah. Oh, no thanks. Not for me. Hardly. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry I brought my friends in. <laughs> I shouldn't have brought him along. <laughs> oh. Uh, oh, are you leaving? Well, we got you at last. What good is it going to do you? Plenty. We've got a hot seat waiting for you. Well, you'll never get me that far, do you hear? You'll never get me into it. Keep your hands down. Think you'll burn me, eh? Stand where you are. Nobody moves, understand? You got her, Jim. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Hey, will you shut that thing off? I was only trying to tune in on a bedtime story. Hey, don't you get enough of that without listening to it on the radio? Say, Squirt, could, uh, could you go for a drink? Sure. Have you got one? Certainly, right out in the kitchen. Go out and turn on the faucet. Oh, water. Yeah. By the way, we, uh, we haven't washed the dishes yet. Well, never mind about them, I'll wash them. Oh, no, 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 we insist, don't we? Oh, yeah, we insist. Certainly. <laughs> Here we go. Head or tail? Tails. Look at it, brother. <laughs> A great big head. Well, Brooklyn, <clears throat> to the kitchen. <laughs> hey, will you get out of here and take care of your housework? All right, but I want Thursdays off. Okay. <laughs> He's a great kid. <laughs> Remember the questions I asked you one morning about Whedon? I thought you were the most horrid person I'd ever met that morning. Well, uh, have I changed? Maybe I have. I didn't have any answer to those questions that morning. I haven't now. I knew Whedon about as well as you know anybody that works in the same office, and that's all. But was there anybody in the bank that hated him enough to, to murder him? I'm afraid not. Funny case. Hey, how you doing out there? Well, good. <laughs> well, there's one he won't have to wash. The whole thing's so simple, it's ridiculous. Now, the cab driver was wise to weed him, so he drove him away and murdered him. Then somebody did the same thing for the cab driver. <laughs> and there you are. Perhaps that's it. Yes, all but for a few very important facts. First, the cab driver, Roberts, was connected with the police. So he certainly couldn't have been a criminal. And there was Whedon found with a thousand dollar bill in his hand. And where did the thousand dollar bill come from that, that Roberts, the cab driver, had in his hand? And how about Bradshaw and... and My brother? Yes, there's something diabolical behind all this. Of course, the cab driver, it's ridiculous to think that he was murdered for his money. Why, why the thousand dollar bill? I tell you, Ruth, I mean, uh, Miss Hackett, before these three other one thousand dollar bills are found, there's going to be plenty of fireworks. There's a cold, calculating mind behind all this. You don't think my brother had anything to do with the crime? No, no, he was just caught in the swirl of things, sort of dragged in as a portion of the prearranged plan. You think somebody else is going to be... Murdered? Well, there's always a chance. I'm hoping they'll find those missing banknotes in time. You have some idea who it is. Yeah, I got an idea. Sort of a fantastic pipe dream. Unfortunately, they have to prove murder. Guessing doesn't count. <laughs> What are you going to do about it? Me? Oh, I'm just going to sit around and wait till there's a slip up. There usually is. Hey, hey look out, will you? Listen, that, that, that wasn't my salt. I mean, that wasn't my walk. I, it was slippery. S say, listen, why do I have to drash and dye all the wish, wish dishes around what here are anyway? What you talking about? Get out in the kitchen where you belong. Oh, oh say, listen, Toots, I'm tired. Is that news? <laughs> oh, all right, if I'm not wanted. I'll look out, will you?
May I? Certainly. I'd like one, too. Oh, all right. I... One of the thousand dollar bills. Your own sins upon keeping Robin Dale from meddling in this affair. Hmm. Meant for Miss Hackett, huh? Well, what are you going to do about it, Dale? One of two things. Either give up seeing the swellest girl in the world or beat this devil to it. Which do you think, Captain? Oh, yeah, I know. You're going to help solve another riddle, aren't you? Good. Well... What do you make of it so far? Well, I can't prove anything and neither can you. But it's easy to explain about the money. Whoever has those bills, they can't use them. So they're just having a little fun with them, that's all. <laughs> yeah, I like your idea of fun, Dale. It isn't my idea, it's theirs. Well, we've started the ball rolling. Released young Hackett today and sent for Bradshaw. I expect him here any minute. Yeah. That must be him now. Do you mind if I sit in and listen? I'd like to have you. Thanks. Hello. Yes? It's Bradshaw. Great. All right, send him right in. Captain Morgan will see you now. <coughs> What's the big idea, Morgan? Well, I needed your assistance, Bradshaw. Oh, now you're coming to me. How frankly can I speak in front of your friend? He's okay. Tony Rico, this is Captain Morgan, a good man to know. Uh, now, how about your friend? Oh, he's all right. Oh, you know me, Dale, from the Daily Journal. Oh, promoted from the newspaper to the cops. That's what I call going up the ladder. No, <laughs> sorry to disappoint you, Bradshaw, but I'm still true to the Daily Journal. Just stick there and you'll be okay. Thanks, I will. Bradshaw, how well did you know Whedon? Whedon? Who's he? Oh, you mean that bank murder. Too bad. Who, who did it, Captain? Well, we're trying to clear up that death. And also the death of Dinky Roberts. What do you know about that? I didn't even know him. Roberts? Did I know Roberts, Tony? Why, well, you never even heard of him. Thought not. He was killed in your old place, the 13 Club. Oh, the Federals closed that a week ago. When did they find this Roberts? You see, uh, I've been away on a little trip over a week. Haven't been feeling so well, have I, Tony? You've been feeling pretty bad, Jack. Say, now listen to me, Bradshaw. You've probably got a good alibi. You usually do have. But get this. I'm going to call your alibi, and I'm going to gag your mouthpiece, and I'm going to put you right where you belong. You get me? Nice of you to get through so quickly. Had an important date for lunch. A lady, too. Hate to keep ladies waiting. Nice to see you again, Captain. Throwing a party tonight for you. I'm sorry, Jack. But I've already got an engagement. Oh, that's all right. Break it. But I can't. Really, I can't. Oh, you wouldn't disappoint all my guests, would you, sweet? George, please. Sit down. I Ed. warned you to keep away from her. George, you don't understand. Listen, Ruth, you're crazy. I told you all I know about him. Sure, enough to send me up the river. Only you won't tell anybody, because you'd hate to go along yourself, eh, Georgie? Get this, kid. Nobody, and that includes you, is coming between Ruth and me. She's satisfied, so that's okay. I don't believe that. But even if she wasn't, it would still stand. Be a good boy now, and don't get yourself into trouble. 
Right, sweet? I was wondering if we could go over these reports tonight, uh, Miss Hackett. I'd like to clear up the weeding matter. Another evening will do. You uh, seem to have better plans for tonight. Thank you, Mr. Tennant. Uh, I wonder if uh, we could find an evening, Miss Hackett. The young man hasn't missed one for days. <laughs> well, I think I can keep him away for one day. Well, good night. Enjoy yourself. Thank you. Hello there, sweet and pretty. Well, I got the tickets and everything. Where are we going? Oh, we're going places. But where? Don't be so inquisitive. <laughs> Better be good. Why? I turned down the grandest party. Well, I won't disappoint you. <laughs> they... Are they married? In love. Lucky. <laughs> Robindale here? Why, yes. I'll uh, call him. Mr. Dale. Okay, Pop. What's on your mind? You, Dale? Why, yes. A friend of ours wants to see you. Okay, let's go. Hey, Ryan, I'm sure I saw one of those fellows with Bradshaw. Bradshaw? Say, something screwy. Dale never came back for his hat. We ought to do something. I'll tell him. You go across the street to the station and wait for my call. You're the punk who's on the make for my girl. Maybe. We'll soon find that out. You're a brave guy, Bradshaw. When you've got a gang of gorillas around you and a gat in your hand. Shut up. I could break in half with these. Maybe. But my idea is you're yellow. Unless you've got a mob in back of you and a row of machine guns in front of you. You're a brave guy, Bradshaw. I always knew that. Wait a minute, Come boys. Come on. I can't lick all of you, but I'll take a chance. If I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it good. And you, Bradshaw, I still think you're too yellow to take a chance with me alone. Now you fellas can see what kind of a man you're taking orders from. Get down to the cars, all of you. Get out. I'm going to bring them down alone. Get out, all of you. Is that you, Sergeant? Yeah. Say, is Ned Parker there? Ned Parker? Yeah, this is Ryan. Yeah, he is? Well, put him on, will you? Oh, hello. Hello, Ned. Say, listen, they took him down to an apartment on 97. Yeah, bring the cops and meet me there on 96 and Broadway. Yeah, I'll be waiting there for you. Yeah, will you make it snappy? All right, kid, so long. You're wondering what I have up my sleeve to make a play like this. Well, I have something. 
It better be good. I got an ace in the hole. Bradshaw, you're not only yellow, but you're a fool. You won't shoot. My back isn't turned. I know you killed Dinky Roberts, but that isn't my ace in the hole. Here it is. I sent your men downstairs into the hands of the waiting police. That spiel of mine was just a stall until the cops got here. Why did you kill Dinky Roberts? Who said I killed him? I did. He was a stool pigeon. Yeah? Everything all right, Jack? I'll be right down, Tony. Bluffing, eh? We're going now, loudmouth. Smart guy. You're too smart. We'll fix that. Just went out that door. Gee, Owens, take you off, then go and find him. Right, Chief. Come on, brother. Gee, look at Ryan. He's wide awake. Yeah, you changed too, Toots. Yeah? Well, here, I bought you a hat and coat. Thanks. Oh, and look, I brought you some, uh, uh, I brought you some embalming fluid. Mm. I thought you might need it for Bradshaw. You better take it. Mm. Yeah, I'll need it. Say, Clammer, you take a look around. Leave it to me. Daily Journal. I want to speak to Mr. Dale. You're sure he isn't there? Thank you. Where'd you find this? In the desk. Dale. What? The $4,000 bill. Listen to this. Dear Bradshaw, here is the last of what I owe you. I'm leaving tonight for good. One thing I want to tell you, Dinky Roberts is being paid by the police. Watch him. Signed, Oliver Whedon. There's still something missing in this whole affair. Something terribly important. Something to tie all these strange clues together. And you know, Cap, when we do find the missing link, everything will clear up all of a sudden. It's all vague, terribly vague. And it's a bit creepy. Kind of got my goat. He's here. Oh, Scribbler, it's for you. <laughs> Thanks. Leave it to me. Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, Ruth. Huh? 
How, how do you know I was here? I've been trying to find you all over. I was desperate. Then I remembered that Bradshaw threatened you. You're all right? Me? Oh, don't worry about me. I'm all right. Sure. Then I was right. You're sure you're safe. Now, there's something else. Something terribly important. I know what happened to Whedon. I know who's guilty. Ruth! Ruth! Oh, don't let me go! Who's that? Why, it's young Hackett. Hackett. Primer, get a doctor. There must be one in the house here. Ruth! Ruth! What's the matter, kid? Ruth! Hey, Ryan! Ryan, hurry up! Get that doctor, will you? Cap! Come here! What's the matter? Look at this! Gee, you, you don't think she'll... I know she's all right. Gee, I hope so. The poor... Half of the last $1,000 bill. I know who did it. Who? Uh, never mind, I know. I'll see you in a few minutes. Now, wait a minute. You better let the law attend to that. Yeah, says you. Excuse me, sir. Never mind you. The police. Clamor, you stay here. Come here. Yes, sir. Stop. Believe it now? Yes, sir. Sit down. Yes, sir. Stand up, never mind. Talk, eh? You killed him. You know you killed him. Turn around. Here's your man. He's ready to confess now. He'll talk now, Clymer. He don't look so much like a killer now, does he, Dale? <laughs> Say, when you want to catch guys like this, leave it to me. What is that doctor coming out of there anyway? Oh, she'll be all right, Toots. I hope so. Well, it's all cleared up now. Ruth really solved the riddle. You see, I figured right when I thought the tenant was an accomplice of Whedon's in robbing the bank. Oh, 
What a swell chance for a tenant. When he discovered that Whedon was using the bank's money to gamble, tenant saw a great chance to clean up. Oh, a great chance. He'd let Whedon do the dirty work, and apparently Whedon would take a run out. And then they'd split. But a split wasn't enough for a tenant. Oh, no. So in Dinky Roberts' cab, he murdered Whedon. Then he gave Roberts a thousand dollar bill to keep quiet. But Tennant, Mr. Tennant, oh no, he wasn't worrying. He made Whedon write those notes. One to Bradshaw and the other to young Hackett. The first, that would get Dinky Roberts out of the way. Then young Hackett, he'd take care of Bradshaw. And then just think of it, not a living soul would know a thing about it. Oh, what a nice, pleasant plan. <laughs> but there's one thing he didn't figure on. And that's Ruth Hackett, following her brother and stopping him. And tonight, finding Tennant as he got rid of the last thousand dollar bill by putting it back into the bank vault. <laughs> oh, Ryan, that was his mistake. But they all make mistakes, all of them. Well, <clears throat> what do you think of me now, Ryan? Hey, Ryan. Did you say anything? Well, young Hackett came clean. Yes? Gave us enough to send Bradshaw's whole mob up the river. <clears throat> hey, what's the idea of scaring a guy like this? Is something the matter? No, but I was, uh, <laughs> I was wondering, uh, is it uh, all right to kiss a person under the doctor's care? You might ask the doctor. Yeah, it's a good idea. How about it, Doc? Why, it's perfectly all right, my boy. <laughs>